with no shame. But we give praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yahuwah by Shem Yahusha this day. John 5, 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allahim in you. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that come from Allahim only? Genesis chapter 4 and verse 19. Henry, get yourself together, son. And Lamech took him unto him two wives. The name of one was Adah, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Adah bare Yabal, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Now we dealt with the dwelling in tents just a small little bit. But now we got to deal with it in a larger bit. When you say, let's look at how he would be the father of such as dwell in tents. Let's take the direction of, screw it. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 34, they ain't hurt nobody. So I'm gonna tell you something too, Stan, and I'm gonna tell you this again after I'm done. I don't care who hears this part of what I got to say. I had a dream a long time ago about our sister that live up there. And it was pertaining, I don't even know why I had it, but I remember telling her in the dream that this is not a competition. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not. You know what I'm talking about? And I have noticed that throughout the course of eight years that that's how very many Hebrews feel it, that it's a competition. A nigga can never see a, another true servant of Yahuwah as his competition because what are we competing for? You know what I'm saying? What did Moses tell Yahushua son of Nun when he said he prophesied in the camp? He said, envy thou for my sake. He said, I hope the Yah and all his people would be prophets. So why would a nigga be, why would, that doesn't make any sense. What, what, what are you competing for? To show you the best preacher? To show you got the most members? That's retarded. And I'm going to be real with y'all on the phone, on the screen, in the room. Only a lame nigga would do that as it pertains to the word. It's just stuck on the threshold. It's getting stuck on that nail on that threshold. You got to put some force on that. You got to put some oomph in that. No, that's not a legal reason to withhold rent. Leviticus 23 34. Henry, Henry, sit down and get you a beverage and drink your troubles away with a nice cup of juice. Would you like to drink your troubles away with a nice cup of juice? Let's drink our troubles away with a nice cup of juice. Henry, you can't get up there in that chair. You got to pull the chair out, son. Speak unto the children of Yasharal, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahuwah. And on the first day shall be a Kadesh convocation. We're going to drop down. We don't need to read all that. Verse 39. I got you. Verse 39. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you've gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. And on the first day shall be a Shabbat. And on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. And you shall take unto you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and the willows of the book. You shall rejoice before Yahuwah your Allah seven days. You shall keep it a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. In the year shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. That all Yasharal, or that all are born of Yasharal shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know. That I made the children of Yasharal to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Misraim. I am Yahuwah your Allahim. So remember, the, the him that is of streaming water calls you to is the father of those that dwell in tents. He says that everybody, the reason why you dwell in these tents for seven days is for the purpose that to remember that you came up out of Misraim. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. See, niggas in these tents just to be in these tents. They're not realizing you're supposed to be in these tents to remember that you came out of bondage. So let you see that tabernacles ties into the same thing that Passover ties into. Freedom. That's what the tabernacles is about. It's about freedom. You're supposed to remember that now you have been freed and now you dwell in your place of rest. See, hold on, because I'm working towards son. Because he say he the father don't dwell in tents, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Let's see if he a father first. What you got, Henry? You got a French fry. Why you ain't give me no French fry, Henry? 
I thought you were my dog. I guess not. I guess we were not as close as I thought we were, sir. Very well. Isaiah chapter 9, you, we, we'll go ahead and take verse 6. Working like that. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, Ever Everlasting Father, the Prince of Shalom, and of the increase of his government in Shalom shall there be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. So he's called the everlasting father. This is what he is called. Now, how is he going to end up being a father? You know, we kind of talked about this a couple weeks ago when Paul said he birthed you through the gospel. You remember we were talking about that? He said he birthed you. So we don't have to go through all this here pinpointing just to, to be redundant because we, we read and see that right there. You put some oof in that one now. You pushed it like you meant it. Like you were pushing them churn out. You know what I'm saying? But we looked at when we were looking at your ball being the stream of water, how Hamashiach got hidden inside, right? And to see that stream of water. And we've dealt with before whether we want to take it to Isaiah 66. Hey, 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 hey. Both of y'all need to be quiet. Sit down, a sigh of joy. Sit down with your juice and drink it. Sire, find somewhere for your derriere and park it there. I don't care where you park it, just park it somewhere. Now see, that was totally unnecessary, sir. So we know that he gave birth, therefore that would be making him a father because we just talked about this, that's why we're not gonna be redundant. We know in Isaiah 53, he said he will see his seed, and we know that takes us back. Whose name is also means father? Abraham. Abraham name means exalted father, correct? He has to follow the framework of Abraham. Let's see how he did that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 8. That's the direction we're going to take from here on out. Let's sit back at how we can see that and tie that in and make that sense. Because what we're going to lead, end up leading up to is our whole objective when you're looking at tabernacle, even when you're looking at atonement, even when you're looking at Pentecost, even when you're looking at Passover, is to become the sons and daughters of God. That's the objective. At the end of the day, that's the objective. There is no other objective that is present. And and, and I, I don't care about mentioning I'm just not going to get to go into no great detail. The problem with all these niggas out here is niggas is competing with other niggas, and it's enough word out here. It's enough people that need to hear the gospel to be saved. When a nigga is thinking about competing with another nigga, that nigga only care about himself. He don't care about y'all, and he definitely don't care about the people. And I look any nigga in his face in America and tell him that. Into the harvest because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So why would an individual want to keep that to himself? Because he could never be able to accomplish the gathering up of that entire harvest. He'd never be able to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? See, this is what I would tell. See, this is what the master would talk about with the scribes and Pharisees. See, they want the praise of men to be seen in the marketplaces. Rabbi, Rabbi. You know what I'm saying? Now I can speak for myself. I do not try to be seen. You know, we in public. I don't want to talk about it. If it don't come up, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to mention it. You wouldn't know it. I don't promote it. You know what I'm saying? If y'all let him catch it, y'all let him catch it. Those of us that's with us, y'all willing our souls get saved. That's all that matters. All that getting your name on, that's lame. You want to get your name known, go be a rapper. Go be an athlete. Go be a politician. Go be a television personality. If you're trying to be seen. How a nigga want to preach the word and be famous? That's lame. That's lame. And honestly, what that is, is that it's a deep level root of insecurity and wickedness. Because that's what the scribes were about. It's being seen. He wanted to be seen. But what did he say about the scribes? He said they were full of wickedness and dead men bone. And traveled to, uh, to and fro to find one proselyte. And when they find it, they make him twice the child of hell that they are. That's what happens. Unfortunately, it's, it's a sad deal. But I can say this here, I done ran across some sincere individuals, regardless if you agree with what they preach or not. There are people out here who are sincerely doing this because they want their scheme to be brought to Yah. When a nigga competing with another nigga, he want their scheme to be brought to him. That's what you want. You ain't gonna tell a nigga that. 
but your actions bear witness to that. That's what, what did the master tell us in Matthew? He said, by their fruits, you're going to know them. Niggas don't pay attention to actions. People don't pay attention to patterns. Patterns show you what type of time a nigga is on. This is what I, never, nevertheless, let's move past that. I didn't have to let that be known. Cause I don't care. That jump was funny to me though. But at the same token, it's sad at the same time because it also shows what is written in the text. Genesis 12 and 5, I want to say. 12 and 5. Yes, sir. 12 and 5. That's what we want. Genesis 12 and 5. But I say praise y'all for the word. It is what it is and it's going to be what it's going to be. Y'all word going to get preached regardless. Souls going to be saved regardless. And souls going to be damned regardless. And either way it go, a steam going to be brought to Yah's name. But which side of the hand are you going to be on? The sheep or the goats? Because he say on his right hand is the sheep. And he said, go and you know, say, hey, blessed are you of my father enter into the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But those on the right hand, he said, enter, enter into everlasting, on the left hand, I'm sorry, that's the ghost. He said, enter into everlasting fire prepared for the devil, devil and his angels. That's what you headed. And, and, and what side of the ledger you land on, land on is contingent on your level of faith and behavior. That's why we mentioned that the first night of the feast. That if you do not hear, then you do not believe. And if you do not believe, you are in violation of the greatest commandment that Yah has commanded. Which is the love in which your whole heart, your whole soul, and your whole strength, and your whole mind. If you do not do that, you are in violation. Because the first word of that commandment is to hear a Shema O Yasharal. Hear with the intent to do. And faith come by hearing, and hearing come by the word. And if you don't hear the word, that means you don't believe the word. If you don't believe the word, you will not be saved. It's the bottom line. That's how it's going down. That's how it's going now. Nevertheless, Genesis 12 and 5. Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they gathered in the souls that they had gotten in Iran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. So they in the land, though they be a stranger in the land that was promised unto them. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sitchum, unto the plain of Moray, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And Yahuwah appeared unto Abram and said, uh, and said unto thy seed Will I give this land And there build he an altar unto Yahuwah Who appeared unto him So now an altar has been built in this land Where he prepared Follow me now because we dealing with That he's the father of those who dwell in tents If you remember Abraham moved around And he dwelled in a tent He had no certain dwelling place and Guess who else walked around and dwelt in a tent And didn't have no certain dwelling place We're going to look at it His name is Isaac and there was another man who walked around and dwelt in a tent who had no certain dwelling place. And his name was Jacob, whose name was later turned to Yasharal. And you know what all three of these men had in common? Because we dealt with this matter a long time ago. All three of them were walking around in the promised land that it was theirs by right of inheritance. Yet they were strangers in their own land. And you know who else walked around in the land that was his and was a stranger in it at that time? Yahusha HaMashiach. And we're taking this connection to only deal with the case in point at hand. To show forth that Abraham is the father of those that dwell in tents. So therefore, if he's a father of those who dwell in tents, then that's his seed that will inherit that land. Therefore, he is the father of those who will become the sons and daughters of the living Elohim. Therefore, Yahusha will become the sons, the, fa the father of the sons and daughters of the living Elohim because they dwell in tents. That tent being him. Nevertheless, let's look at verse 8. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethal and pitched his tent, having Bethal on the west and Ha on the east. And there he built an altar unto Yahuwah and called upon the name of Yahuwah. And Abraham journeyed, going on still towards the south. Now I'm going to ask y'all a question. Who know you know what Bethal means, Stanley? What that mean? House the house of bread. So hold on. What would you imagine that the city Ha that was on the east, what that meant? Ha. Ha. H-A-I. It literally means a place of ruin. So think about this and think about this real closely in your minds. Cycle it around in your minds. And it's actually a Ha, how I said. It means a heap of ruins. It was a city east of Bethel, near Bethaven, near Jericho that had been destroyed. So you got the house of bread, you have the altar, and then you have a heap or destruction or ruin in the city. Let's continue on to the 13th chapter of Genesis, and let's see what else we will see.
And let's pick ourselves up at about verse 14. Matter of fact, make it verse 12. That's Genesis chapter 13 and verse 12. Henry J. Wellington. Where you going, son? You going for Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before Yahuwah exceedingly. And Yahuwah said unto Abram that after Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou see to thee will I give it to give it unto thy seed forever. Because remember, that means if he's going to make Abraham a father of many nations, that's what he said, right? Then it's got to pertain to Yahushua, the same token. For, because clearly Abraham is a father of those that dwell in tents. We will back that up in a moment. He said, I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto Yahuwah. So now we see him moving his, his tent from in between what? The house of bread and the house of destruction. That's what we see him doing. Now we see him moving his tent and moving it in another location, in between Mamre and Hebron. So let's see what we get from Mamre and Hebron, and let's get some understanding when it comes to that. The plain of Mamre. That is strength or fatness. Well, he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron. My apologies. And then the city of Hebron is association. So he pitched his tent in associated strength. So then we have to see where would this exalted father associate his strength to after he's dwelt and made an altar to where he can sacrifice in between the house of bread and the house of destruction. Now let's look at Genesis 26 to see if Isaac dwelt in tents. Because he's got to be the father of those who dwell in tents, right? We got to see that. Let's see that. That's correct, sir. That is correct, sir. Genesis chapter 26. What we want, right? By verse 26, is that what I want? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm looking right at the verse. I know I am. I knew I was looking right at it. Genesis 26 and 24. Genesis 26 and 24. Yahuwah appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the Elohim of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of Yahuwah and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. So after Yah appeared to him, it said he pitched Because Isaac is a nomad too. Dwelling in tents. And what were the children of Yasharal doing? They had to pick their tents up and move it from place to place. Because they had to be able to understand you are birthed from the father who dwells in tents. So now you sit back. We're going to look at this. this. Bear with me. I'm trying to sit back. I'm trying to also go through this, the, 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 the dealing with in our captivity. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now the word for the word for dig in this verse is kara, and it means to dig through or bore a hole through. And so they said they dig the well. It said Isaac's servants are the one who dig the well. So then we have to sit back and correlate this to Mashiach. How did Yahuwah's servants dig a well? Because we already talked about the well last night. We're trying to tie everything in together. Just bear with me. Because y'all willing tomorrow we're going to deal with how he's the father of those who keep cattle. Because your ball was the father of two different sets of people. People who dwelt in tents and people who kept cattle. Also while he being a stream of water. That stream of water representative of the Ruach. Therefore he's representative of those who dwell in Alahim. And then he's also representative of those who feed the flock of Alahim. Nevertheless. 
Let me see what city that's it. He was in the valley of Gerar. That's in verse 17 of Genesis 26, because I know we didn't read that. But he was dwelling in the valley of Gerar. That's where Isaac pitched his tent at. That's Stanley already mentioned. And Gerar means a lodging place. A lodging place. A place to live. Now, we know that also. Uh, Jacob walked around in a tent, right? Now, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. We got to make sure we tie everything in before we depart. We will be at Regency on Shabbat. I will drop that back in at, at the time appointed. 11 and 11. Matter of fact, 11 and 8. Hebrews 11 and 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place which he should receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Dwelling in what? Tabernacles. With Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. He's telling you he dwelt in tents with those who are inheritors of that same promise. So he's showing you how he is. Abraham is also the father of those who dwell in tents. So then we have to take it to Yahusha and show how he's going to be the father of those who dwell in tents. Because if we look at dwelling in tents, he's saying that they dwelt in tents even though they were strangers in their own place of promise. So what we're dealing with this is, is now that we're going to be dealing with what we're going to get to, y'all willing to show how you dwelling in Yahusha, dwelling in the promise, even though you dwelling among strangers or you are not in the, you haven't received that promise yet. And this would be the objective for you to continue in the faith. See, that's how I told y'all before. Tabernacles ain't just about dwelling in no tent. That's all, if you pay attention, and some of y'all may have been guilty of it. All a nigga concerned about is, we got to dwell in the tents. We got to dwell in the tents. Missing why you're dwelling in the tents. Because when Abraham left from, out of, from, from, from amongst his people, he was leaving from a spiritual bondage, so to speak, because his family were idolaters. And he set him free to dwell in the tent. Now Isaac and Jacob... Isaac is being sent forth to go forth and do what he has to do. And Jacob's getting sent forth to do what he has to do. While they're dwelling in tents amongst strangers or amongst sinners. Now you have to sit back and look at that you want to dwell in a tent amongst sinners while you've come out of bondage. If you take it all the way back to Abraham. Because remember the law said that you were dwelling in these booths for what? To remember that you came up out of Mizraim. So you want to be dwelling in Yahusha and Yahusha dwelling in you so you can remember that you came up out of sin and no longer subject to bondage. So dwelling in that tent is for you to remember what you have been delivered from. But see, we don't consider that. You know what I'm saying? That's why a nigga would be simple enough to pitch it in his house. You know what I'm saying? And it's several niggas who've done kind of seeing nigga poke. Just like Darius showed a nigga got a tent in his living room. Because you think it's about the tent. You could have left that tent in the back. You know what I'm saying? And just sat in your living room. Because you have not pleased y'all with this work. Because you have not even considered why you were actually dwelling in this tent. Look at what he said. Goodly bows. Strong trees. Because this is a defense. This is for rest. Nevertheless, verse 9, verse 10, for he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is Elohim. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky and multitude, and the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, in Shamahim, wherefore Allahim, 
it's not a shame to be called their Elohim, for he had prepared for them a city. Now we're going to tie that into Mashiach too, of what is written in this epistle as well, for us to get an understanding. Because we see in these promises, you can't see the resurrection of the dead. See, we talked about the resurrection of the dead last night. He said, if you believe, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Believe thou this? Whosoever live and believe in me shall never taste death. Elizabeth Renee, in a side joy, get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down. I'm not playing with you. Do you see a smile on my face? Henry, don't let them get you in trouble. You ready to go to bed? You ready to go to bed? You are. Go put your light clothes on then. Aside, Joy, don't start all that screaming. So consider that. He said, those that do this confess plainly. Come over here, Lizzie. That they're a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. Let's see Yahoo Shah confessing. Because we already seen that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were strangers. Let's see if Yahoo Shah was a stranger on the earth. John chapter 17. And if he's confessing that, if Yahoo Shah is confessing he's a stranger. And after we read this, we'll read Luke 13. If he's confessing he's a stranger, and then we show him that he's a pilgrim. That he is declaring plainly that he seeks a better country and that he was mindful of where he departed from so that he could return. Yeah, we said I'm not earnest, there you go. So, guess what? We need to turn around and look at we are strangers and pilgrims, you're not of this place, not just America, but as you stated, of this world. Therefore you would esteem the things that are on high Because you look for a kingdom That is from Shamahim That is eternal and not fashioned and, and equipped with man's hands So therefore you can dwell in tents Because you would be dwelling in an everlasting tent And that would be in the house of Ali Praise the Lamb for the word John chapter 17 And then we'll swing to John chapter uh, I believe that's 8 And then Luke 13 John chapter 17, verse 5. Praise y'all for the word. And now, O Abba, esteem thou me with thy own self, with the esteem which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gave them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me. And they have received them. And have known surely that I came out from thee. And have believed that thou did send me. Verse 21. And okay, I almost forgot because we got to tie this to son Nelson the law. In Genesis chapter 9. About dwelling in a tent. That they all may be in one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the esteem which thou gave me I have given them. That they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me. That they may be perfect in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. And hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Abba, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That they may behold my esteem, which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Now they're one in him. They're dwelling in him. The same way, check it. What did we read in Hebrews 11? Did it not say that Isaac and Jacob dwelt in the same tent as their father Abraham? Is he not saying that those that inheritors of the promise dwell in the same tent as their father Yahusha? Because we need to be perfect in one. See, the reason why we're not perfect in one is because niggas is wicked. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are not dwelling in the Mashiach. And like Paul said, you got false brethren and false prophets have creeped in unaware, seeking to draw men after them to grievously destroy the flock. That's what he warned them in Acts chapter 20. Nevertheless, John chapter 8. Well, get your hand out your butt, boy. Digging cheese, boy. You digging cheese, boy? You not. 8 and 22 8 and 21 Hey Abigail Hey Gail Yes Gail 
You can't walk through that little muffin. Then said Yahweh shall get unto them, I go my way and you shall seek me and you shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Catch this now. What did we just look at? He said if they were mindful of where they left from, then they would be able to return. Is that not what it said? He said, well, I go, you can't go. Because he's about to confess that he's a stranger on this earth. Because it said he came unto his own and his own received him not. It also told you, where is that at? Oh, that's in the book of Job. It said, my breath was strange to my children in the 19th chapter. So my ruach, my word, because he said, what did he say? It's the ruach that quicken, if the flesh profit, if nothing. The words that I speak unto you are, they are ruach and they are life. But my words were strange unto my children. They were strange, because I'm a stranger here. I'm not of this world. It behooved them to be made like unto his brethren, and not after the nature of Malachim, so he could be a faithful and merciful high priest to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Yahushua was a stranger. So when he said, where I go, you cannot come, he was confessing of the place that he left from, mindful that he could return. So we're supposed to have that same mind. You departed from Jerusalem. You confess that you, if a nigga my America's my home, Mama Africa, that ain't my home. Jerusalem is my home because that is the place where Yahuwah placed his name. That's the place where he placed his house at, where he placed his name. That is the place where I seek to dwell. That is my home because that is the city that says Yah is there. That's what the books say. So that is my home. So that is where I seek to dwell. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. He said, there's plenty of tents in my father's house. Because you got to look at the converse. What you, when we come, this is another reason why you know that we'll be keeping tabernacles at the end. Because you'll be coming out of Misraim, and therefore you must dwell in tents. And we will see that in the book of Ezekiel That when they came up out of their last captivity That they were what? Dwelling in tents in a city without bars and gates Because we didn't need it Because our Allahim was our protection We got to understand that And the only way you can dwell in This is how you know he's a father of those who dwell in tents Because he has prepared a place for his children to dwell and this is tying back to stuff we've been talking about for the last three, four days, truth be told. Then said the Yahudim, will they kill himself? Because he's saying, whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto him, you are from beneath and I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I am a stranger. So let's see another way by action that Yahusha shows he's a stranger. And therefore, what are we also looking at? He planted his tent in association well, in the strength or fatness of association. That's what I said, right? Then we see that he also planted his tent. This is Abraham we're talking about. In between the house of bread and the house of destruction. So we got we to gotta rec we gotta reconcile both of those, right? Let's do that. Let's look at Luke 13 first. Luke 13 and 30. And then let's reconcile that. From the works of Mashiach. For us to understand what we need to do. We need to set our altar up in the plane of fatness. So we can be associated with Allahim. We need to set our tent in between the house of bread. And the house of destruction. So that we can be dwelling with Allahim. Luke 13 and 30 right. It would help if I was in the 13th chapter. And not the 12th. It's 31. Luke 13 and 31. The same day there came certain other Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell thy thoughts, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. You know, we didn't dealt with this before. This is a Mashiach walking the land so he could inherit it. But if he's walking the land that he can inherit it, that means he has to plant his tent in the plane of strength. Correct? Let's see how he does that. Let's go to Matthew 27. And after that, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So when we turn around and look at it, in our weakest state, we need to plant our tent in the plane of strength or fatness. So to speak. Yeah, praise y'all for the word. We motoring around. It's 840. 
We good. We good. We are good. We are. We're doing good on time. As time is concerned. Matthew chapter twenty-seven. What is the verse that I want? Oh yeah, I might need to go to verse twenty-six on that. Actually, come over here to John eighteen. John eighteen has got what I want. I think John eighteen has got what I want. John eighteen and one. When Yahushua had spoken these words, he went forth with the disciples over the brook of Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Yahushua all time resorted with it with his disciples. Now, you know, the first place where he went and played at was where? It was in a plain. That's what I was looking for, actually. I don't think it's in, it's in Matthew, but I think it's in 26 John. It was a place where he, a plain where he went and pitched his tent at. You know what that place, that place? What's it called? Jessamine. That's where he went at, right? When he went to pray, that's where he planted his tent at. This is, and, and what was he doing? Let, let, let's do that correctly. Matthew 26. Let me not even do that. Let's just do it correctly. It's better to do it right. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36. Because remember, this is the strength. This is where memory is, which is in the city of Hebron, which is association. We also know Jerusalem is what? The city of Shalom. This is the city of the Father. If you you associate Jerusalem with who? Yahuwah. That's what you associate it with. Or you're going to be, if you associate it with something, you're joined to it. You're down with it, correct? That's what you also seen in John chapter 17. That's what we need to be seeking to do and be associated with Yahuwah. You need to plant your tent in the strength so you can be associated with him. How do you plant your tent in the strength to be associated? Let's see. Then come Yahushua with them unto a place called Jessamine, and he saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tear ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Abba, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Now he is placing himself in the strength of Elohim at this particular point. Let's see how. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Make it verse 8. Make it 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Hashatan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. You know how this actually pertains to Yahusha, to keep it 100? The people were the thorn in his side to buffet him so he would not be exalted above measure because there were times where the people were going to make him king before time. Remember it says he learned obedience from the things that he suffered and that he humbled himself unto the state even under the death of the state that the father might exalt him so when you see when Paul is saying what he is going through in this instance it's the same thing what Yahushua went through to keep him humble and it points to what we have to do to be able to be exalted by Elohim is that he has to do things to humble you see niggas resist their humbling because what he said he that exalt himself shall be abased he that humbleth himself shall be exalted he said in another place that the mountains would be brought low and the valleys would be brought high. We know a plain is a low place. You see Yahushua planting his tent in the plain of Jessamine and, and Abraham planting his tent in the plain of Mamre. So when they were without strength, he was able to give them strength. So we have to know that when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of Elohim, that's when we're able actually to be strong. That's why the book says, let him that is weak Say that I am strong. But see, modern men believe that they're strong, but in actuality, they're weak. And they have a false sense of bravado and strength that they try to impart unto others to cover up for the inherent weaknesses that they possess. Instead of letting those weaknesses be made manifest and letting you who will heal them of them according to the power and might of his word. But men don't want to do that. And I'm talking about in many situations. Because, you know, men are taught not to show weakness and not to be weak. But let's look at what Paul says. He said, for this thing I besought the master thrice that it might depart from me. How many times did Yahushua pray to his Abba that that might depart from him? Three times. So you see, Paul is following in the pattern of Yahushua. 
Because some of y'all might have been in situations where you went to Abba numerous times asking him for a situation to depart from you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't realizing that this situation to depart from you was to exalt you into his might. Y Yahusha asked for three times for this to depart from him. But yet he still got lifted up on that stake and all men drew themselves unto him. Therefore the father was esteemed because the son was esteemed. Therefore making him the father of those who dwell in tents and all those that believe on his name dwell in him and he in them. And now they're perfect in one because they were birthed from him. And now you're dwelling in that tent which is the tent of Allahim. Therefore going from place to place professing that you're a stranger and a pilgrim in the earth. Seeking a kingdom that is from on high That you might receive that inheritance And that's what we are That's what you're going to be remembering during the week of tabernacle Is you trying to receive an inheritance Because when they were dwelling in booths What were they getting ready to receive? An inheritance They were getting ready to receive an inheritance We after receiving an inheritance That can never per perish or pass away That is stored up in Shamahim for us By Allahim Nevertheless, verse 9, he said unto me, my favor is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather esteem in my infirmities that the power of Mashiach may rest upon me. Who was that crying? Oh, that's him. Abigail, for you, like she done assaulted him. And she she is playing like she the one pulled that caper. Did you beat up Mario uh, Abigail? He says, therefore I will take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for the Mashiach's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's what we have to understand. And then that way you're associated with Allahim like we read in John 17. But how is he the house of bread and the house of destruction in the midst of that altar? John chapter 6. Would you like to get down, Gail? Yes, you would like to get down. Bye-bye, Gail. Be careful, Gail. Yeah. John 6 and 50, 48, I suppose. Yeah? Well, that's Henry you talking to, Gail. John 6 and 48. Hey, Henry. Hmm? Is food over there? You already ate some. Yeah. I know. Okay. Matter of fact, hold on. Genesis 9 and 27. Let me deal with that before I deal with John 6. I'm finna get ready to let y'all slide in a minute anyway. I got a couple more things and then we out of dough. I think we've established that he's the father of those who dwell in tents. If we have not, then we'll have to come back and do it again a little better. Genesis 9 and 26. And he said, Baruch be Yahuwah Elohim of Shin, Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Elohim shall enlarge Yafet, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. You remember what Yafet name me? So he's saying that Alahim shall enlarge or open and that those who have been open will dwell in the tents of the name. Or those who he have opened will dwell in the house of Yahuwah. You follow what I'm saying? Now let's look at John 6 and 46. See that goes to what we were looking at with Hebron and Mamre. Well, really, with Beth all. Yeah, trash. I got you. That's what we're looking at with Beth all. With Be that's why we had to go here with Beth all, and I'm sorry, and, and I. The house of bread, and the destruction and ruin. But he said he's going to open, so that they can dwell in the tents of the name. So that means he's going to open something, 
to allow the people to dwell in the house of Yahuwah. This is what he's telling us. John 6 and 46. 48, I'm sorry. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which come down from Shamahim that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am that living, I am the living bread which come down from Shamahim. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So when he's making this statement, do you not see that he's the house of bread? He's telling you that, but then he's telling you this house of bread will be destroyed. The same thing where we see where Abraham dwelt, pitched his tent at. And we see where did Yahushua pitch his tent at. Because he was the altar. Because when he was on the stake, he was on the altar. And he had two people on the side of him. Where he offered himself. And he dwelt in his tent at that particular time. In between those two places. Because you had one man who was able to enter into the house of bread. Because he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And he had another man who had condemned himself. Right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Now we got to look at how does he open the house for the name to dwell. So I got a couple more places. What that is? First Chronicles 17. I got a little time. And Second Samuel 7. We'll see if Second Samuel 7 will be relevant. And I got to get Psalm 78 in here. But guess what? Who is Shem? Shem is the father of Abraham, right? Who Elohim blessed. So Shem would also be a father, though, who dwell in tents. What do you know? You see that? Notice it down the line that the major patriarchs continually be men who dwell in tents. And their children dwell in tents. First Chronicles 17. First Chronicles 17 and uh, verse 5, I suppose. Verse 4. Verse 4. Make it 3. And it came to pass the same night the word of Elohim came to Nathan, saying, yeah. Go tell David my servant, thus saith Yahuwah, thou shalt not build me a house to dwell. For I have not dwelt in the house since the day that I brought up Yasharal unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and one tabernacle to another. So he said he done went from tent to tent, one tabernacle to another. Whatsoever I have walked with all Yasharal, spoke I a word to any of the judges of Yasharal, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedars? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus have you of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shalt be a ruler over my people Yasharal. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thy enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the, in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Yasharal, and I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and they shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. So he said he is going to appoint a place for his people to dwell in. You notice how earlier he said he would open up somewhere and that they would dwell in, in the tents of Shem or in the tabernacle of the name or the tabernacle or house of Yahuwah. We know from John chapter 2, didn't Mashiach say destroy this temple, I'll build it up in three days. Does not Amos say that he will rebuild the tabernacles that have been destroyed and make them as in the beginning? So how do we get to he is appointed a place for his people to dwell that the children of wickedness cannot afflict them anymore as at the beginning? Who are the children of wickedness afflicting someone at the beginning? The children of wickedness afflicting them at the beginning is the Amicalites. But then if you take it any further, it's Hashatan afflicting Eve and Adam in the garden. But the first instance with the children of Yasharal, it is the Amicalites. It's the Amicalites. Nevertheless, let's look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. Henry J. Billington. Hey, take them paper towels, man. Take them paper towels, man. First ah. John 2 and 7. Screw it. They ain't heard nothing. Can't never get too much word. Praise y'all for it. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. 
The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past and true light now shine. Because remember, in Haggai he say the esteem of the latter house will be greater than the esteem of the former house. Because we know the temple of the house of Yahuwah is the place where everybody went and did what? Worshipped. The master told you that Elohim is a Ruach and all that serve him must serve him in Ruach and truth. Worship him must worship him in Ruach and truth because he seeketh such to worship him. So all of those who will enter into the house of Yahuwah must serve him in Ruach and the truth in order to dwell in this house. Because he said that, he said that place is a sanctuary for his people to dwell. Nevertheless, which is a resting place. And we have a place for that. Just bear with me. He that love his brother abide in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. Now I'm going to just keep it 100. Let's just keep it 100. Anybody that you say that they say that if somebody say they're a brother what do they say they're doing? They're keeping the will of Elohim, right? But if an individual say he is a brother and you find him sinning that means he don't have love for one or all of his brothers in his heart. Because what did this text just say? He that love his brother abide in light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. Because if you abide in light, you abide in you, or you abide in eternal life. So when you see niggas stumbling, it's because the love of their brother can't be in their heart. First and foremost, that love for, for, for Yahoo shot. They couldn't love him, so therefore they can't love a man who they see. That's going to be impossible. Because that, ain't that what it said? If you love your brother, you ain't gonna you ain't going to stumble. That's what it said then. So we see niggas stumbling, that could be a large indicator. Why are you stumbling all the time? What's the purpose? What's the cause? And it doesn't necessarily have to be that you don't love a person that you're dealing with directly. You don't have the love of Elohim in your heart for your brethren, period, no matter where they dwell. No matter if you have close contact with them or not. But he that hate his brother, but he that hate his brother is in darkness and walk in darkness and know not whither he go because the darkness has blinded his eye. Because what else would cause you to stumble but sin? Know what he tell him? I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Let me say he ordained a place for his name for you to dwell. I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you children because you have known the father. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of Elohim abide in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Didn't he say once he appointed and ordained this place that the children of wickedness would not cause his people to be afflicted anymore? So once you dwell in Yahusha and Yahusha dwell in you, once you dwell in this tent or in this house, the children of wickedness should not afflict you anymore. We're not talking about afflicting you as forth as talking about tribulations and persecutions. We're talking about sin at this point. Uh, is, is that, uh, I hope that makes sense because that's what we're talking about. Hold on one second. So now I'm trying to remember the next direction that we want to go with that. Oh yeah, that's the direction we want to go with it. Genesis, I mean Ezekiel 37 and 25. Now for Ezekiel 37 and 25, we'll swing right to Ezekiel 38. And then from Ezekiel 38, we will swing to Psalm 78. We're going to go a little bit past 9 o'clock, so forgive me. Just a little bit past. We ain't going to ride too long. But I think we didn't show forth how Yahusha is the father of those who dwell in tents. Because we see dwelling in those tents is dwelling in this house. And then last and certainly not least, Yahuwah willing. And that is, uh, yeah, 37 and 25. And you who are willing, we'll deal with tomorrow how he is the father of those who keep cattle. Because you know what was our occupation of our forefathers? They were what? They kept cattle. That stuff ain't by no accident. This stuff ain't in here by no accident. And they shall dwell in the land that I've given unto Jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt and they shall dwell therein even they and their children and their children's children forever and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover I will make a covenant of shalom with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. Keep that in mind. And my tabernacle shall also be with them. Yea, I will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahuwah, do sanctify Yasharal, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. They should have known when Yahusha was in the middle of that of those two thieves, that he had sanctified Yahusha or Yasharal, that they may know that Elohim was in the midst, dwelling with us. Verse 11 of Ezekiel 38. 
and then Psalm 78, and that's verse 8, my apologies, not Ezekiel 38 and 11, but it's, oh yeah, it is verse 11. I'll start at verse 8, though. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people. Mom, hey, that verse be, that, that, that ain't happening yet. That has not happened. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, and thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Zechariah 14 will show you how we brought back from the sword. And it's gathered out of many people. Isaiah 27 and 12. Matthew chapter 24. Isaiah chapter 11. We have not been gathered out of many people. Against the mountains of Yasharal, which have always been waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. When we were dwelling in tabernacles in the wilderness, we dwell safely. Thou shalt ascend and come up like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Thus saith you, Elohim, it shall come to pass that at the same time strange things shall come into thy mind. Thou shalt think of evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. You dwelling in tents. You dwelling in tents. Chilling. That ain't happened yet. And guess when that will happen? Tabernacles. I got it because you got to dwell in booths. That feast got to be fulfilled too. Yahushua has not fulfilled that feast. Not in the literal sense. You could say that in the say the giving of the Ruach HaKadosh if you want to say, but he has not fulfilled that thing. He said, blessed is him that see me coming in the third watch. It's three times you got to come up. You, did, you weren't mandated to come up to Jerusalem for trumpets. You weren't mandated to come up to Jerusalem for atonement. You were mandated to come for Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. Get off that couch, boy. You were mandated to do that. That was in the law. You had to do that. Psalm 78. As you can tell, I could go a lot longer, but you know we're in a condensed, condensed time right now. What you cheesing about, young Renee? Come here, Renee. Oh no, no, I don't know what that is. You need to go wash your hands. Go get your mama to wash your hands. Oh no. What is that, Renee? Oh, that's lotion. Never mind. Psalm 78 and 60, I want to say. Actually, Psalm 78 and uh, 58. They provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. And when Elohim heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Yasharal. That means he hated him. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men. You know what Shiloh mean? It means rest. What did the master say in Matthew chapter 11, if I'm not mistaken? Come. And I'll give you what? So he's the rest. So when he say he forsook, forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, he said, my Elohim, my Elohim, why have you forsaken me? And that's what Paul, that's what he was looking at. And that's what sometimes when you're going through afflictions and you're going through sufferings for the word, you feel like Yahuwah has forsaken you. But he has not forsaken you. Listen, the next thing he said. He delivered his strength into captivity and his esteem into the enemy's hand. Well, he delivered his strength. We know the law says your strength is what? Your firstborn. Yasharal is my son, even my firstborn. We know Colossians says he's the firstborn of the dead. So he has preeminence in all things. What is this captivity he gave him into? Not the captivity of the Romans and the tribes and the priests. He gave him to the captivity of death. Because he said he that commits sin is the servant of sin and he can't abide in the house forever. So you have to be expelled. So in order to be, for him to, for him, for you to be a son and daughter of the father that dwell in tents, you cannot sin. Because that's what he said in John chapter 8, right? He that commits sin is the servant of sin and the servant cannot dwell in the house. We know that takes us back to Ishmael. He was cast out. He was a bond man. He was a sinner. Why do we know how this pertains to what we're looking at with your ball? 
because your bald name means stream of water. We talked about it last night. All those who receive the stream of water have received the Ruach HaKadosh. That means they have right to everlasting life, which means they have right to the resurrection of the dead, which means they have right to the tree of life, which means the children of wickedness no more afflict them because they dwell in the house where Yahuwah is appointed. Therefore, sin no more reigns in their mortal body because they have overcome the wicked one. Therefore, they can dwell in his tent. Can you dwell? What does he tell you in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? He says, shall we take the body of Mashiach and join it to a hall at Allahim forbid? So do you think you can bring ungodliness in the house of Allahim and it be sufficient and that you could dwell there in the nature of your sin? Absolutely not. Can't happen. So when he said he gave him into the enemy's hand, we see he gave him into the hand of death. But he gave him into the hand of death, going back, correlating back to what we were talking about last night, so that we could have life, because he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. So he could give forth that stream of water for that, that fountain for sin and uncleanliness, which he said in the, for the house of David. And he gave his people over also over unto the over also unto the sword and was wroth unto his inheritance. And that sword is taking us back to David, where he said the sword will always be in your father's house, in your house. And he was angry with his inheritance because who is his inheritance? The books say the priests are his inheritance. Say so you don't have no inheritance. I'm your inheritance. Yahusha said, I have no place to lay my head. He said, I didn't come to be served. Served, I came to serve. Yahusha said he had no inheritance because Abba was his inheritance. You see how they go together? And they go together because he dwelt in his father's house. And therefore, when we dwell in our father's house, which is Yahusha, and Yahweh shall dwell in us, then we can have an inheritance. What was the last place I was going to go? Revelation chapter 21. I'm going to wind it on down. What is wrong with him? Life. Verse 3, and we start right here. And I heard a great voice out of the Shamahim saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Allah is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Allah himself shall be with them. And be their Elohim. You'll dwell in him. He gonna bring his house. Actually, Revelation three and twelve. We read it last night too, but let's go ahead and get that. I got many more places, but I gotta stop. I can't keep going. I don't even want to know why you walked out here like that, son. He looked like I ain't even gonna say nothing. I'm gonna keep that. I ain't even gonna say that. He sitting back looking at. I got cool. You know what you gotta do to get that rent money, girl. That's how you look. You know what you gotta do to get that rent money. You willing to do it? You need it. I got it. I how you look. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. He shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which come down from Shamahim, from my Elohim, and I will write upon him my new name. He said he'll make you a pillar in that house. You'll be able to dwell in that tent. But hallelujah for Yahusha and the word. We 